Hi, Paul Bedford here from Retention Guru, and in this clip, originally recorded back in 2018 with Matthew Janizic from the Escape podcast, uh, Escape Your Limits podcast, I talk about group exercise and retention. I then go on to talk about boutiques and how boutiques have created experiences and what we were able to see at that time about the impact of retention via group exercise. Now, since then, a lot of things have evolved and a lot more people book their classes so we can track that data in a way that we couldn't track it before. So we're more up to date than we were when I first recorded this. But I'd be interested in your thoughts or your comments, which you can put in the box down below. For the time being, enjoy the clip and I look forward to speaking to you again soon. Take care, bye. And then what about Group X then? So that uh, both, I guess, yeah. from a boutique perspective even more. How does this work for those guys that have gone that type of model? I think that I think the thing to think about, and I sit on the fence, I do at some level believe group exercise improves retention, but I also have data that there's no difference in retention between men and women. And seeing as men and women, more women do group X, I would expect to see it in the data that women stay longer than men. We've never seen it. We've never seen it anywhere. So there's part of me what's going on there. I'd also think if group X did retain more people, why aren't all the classes full? Just because over a year you should sell enough memberships that they retain and the classes just reach capacity. But we do know that people who do Group X do stay a bit longer. But what you're, sorry, just on that early point then, but what you're saying is in terms of retention as a whole, yeah. all the studies you've done, there's no difference between men and women. There's no difference between men and women. And the challenge we've had in terms of measuring Group X, and we're about to do some big studies on this, is often the club data doesn't tell us where they went. They tell us they're in, but once they're in, we don't know if they went and sat in the sauna, did a swim, did a workout. Some clubs are now using different types of technologies to track where their customers are, so we can actually see where, what that is. But up till now, it's been very difficult to do that. When we have done studies on Group X, what we've found is that people who do Group X tend to stay longer than people who, do, who just do the gym. What we also found was that most of the people who do some group X also do some gym, even if it's just go and run on a treadmill or go and use some medicine balls or some battle ropes or some kettlebells. They supplement 15 minutes in the gym yeah. with yeah, their I've class. Seen that a lot. But we've also got to think about routine. And I know a lot of people like to talk about habit. For me, a habit is something that happens without thinking. I don't think apart from those who are really savvy, people are habituated to exercise. I think exercise becomes a routine. It becomes part of their lifestyle. So if they go to a class on a Monday night at 6 o'clock, it's Monday night at 6 o'clock. As soon as we can create routines, and I think that's what we should do with Group X, is we should try and find ways of creating routines so that people in their diaries go, that part of the day is sacred. That part of the day is sacred. Not just for them, but then other people in their work environment, their home environment, go, oh, I can't ask them to do that because they do that on that night. And I know we did a report called The Black Report where we interviewed a 1,000 customers who'd been members of two gyms. So they joined, stayed, left, joined, stayed, left, or joined, stayed, may have left, may not. Between them, they had 6,500 years of experience, which is mad. But there was a woman that gave me a quote, and that quote was, Thursday night is Zumba night. And on Thursday night, I do Zumba. My husband knows that's what I do, and he has to get home early from work and look after the kids. And if he's not going to get home early from work, he has to arrange childcare, because Thursday night is Zumba night. Now, that might have been the one time in the week that woman went to the club, but it was so clearly defined that nothing gets in the way of that. And I think that's what group exercise does for a lot of people. It gives them a point of time in their diary where they can go, at this time, I do this. At this time, I do this. And that's why I think partly the boutiques are successful. I think also they're successful because of the social connection. I'm part of something. The cognitive load is low. Wait, I don't wait, have to think. It, what do you mean? mean about, oh, OK, you're not I don't have to about think about doing. much. When I turn up, they say, stand up, I stand up. They say, sit down, I sit down. If I'm in the gym, I go, which cardio, which resistant, what free weights, what functional. I have to think that through, whereas I think what you're seeing with things like boot camps, with boutiques, small group sessions, yoga sessions, people is like, I don't want to think. I want to be done to almost. Just lead me through it. 
I think group exercise has a lot of more potential than it's already got. Really? Yeah. Yeah. But I think we've got just a traditional way of going, partly it's a show. It's like, I've got to perform. Where actually, there are simple things we could do in a class that actually raise the level of the experience for the customer, which isn't about the person on, in, who's leading the class. And what were those? So I'll just keep it on boutique yeah. then. So what are those things? Do, do those exact same rules apply or is there anything additional that they could think, be doing? I think what boutiques have done is they've thought about, they've thought about the experience is the product. The whole experience is the product from arrival to changing to working out. And many of the boutiques that I've tried, someone greets you when you walk into the class. They're actually at the door. You do the class, you watch them lead it. When you finish, they're by the door to say goodbye. It's not, they rush in late, they bend over, I can see their bum, they're trying to sort out their music. They go, sorry, I'm late, and then they rush into it. And at the end, they're grabbing their stuff and they're off to the next class. They're actually taking time to go, actually, I value you. I value the fact you turned up today and I'm going to recognise that you turned up today. And there are simple things like one of the things we do in the gym to the gym staff and front of house staff is we say to them, when someone leaves, say, when are you in next? Now, we found that to have a really powerful impact on people going, oh, I'll be in on Friday. And then they're making that commitment to come in Friday. Group exercise is even easier. You stand at the end of the class finishes and you say, put your hand up if you're going to be here again same time next week. Now, all the people who think they are going to be will put their hands up. All the ones who don't put their hand up come over and go, I can't be in next week. I'm really sorry, Matthew. I've got work or I've got... But in their head, they're like, I have to explain why I can't be here, which actually drives them to want to be at the next session even more. Yeah, it's very clear, yeah. So it's very, very simple. And if you've got another class the same week, you know, you do Teach Tuesday and it's Thursday, who's going to be here Thursday?